Not pants. Um, our, we all work from home. Yeah, our lower it's why, it's why the cameras yeah. they remove. Uh, my name is Chris. Uh, I'm Jazz Sequence on the internet. Jazz Sequence with a three. Uh, and uh, I'm joined, as always, by my two pals, Allison, who's Allison Plus on the internet, uh, and is a um, amateur veterinarian. Um, doing some back alley uh, spays and neuters. And uh, Gary, who's an amateur astronaut, uh, building some back alley rocket ships uh, and shooting them up into space with some um, diesel uh, fuel and lawnmower engines. I don't even own a lawnmower. What? Even better, well, it's because it's in your, in your rocket ship. Yeah, well, there's that. You have a lawn, right? I do. There's a good story about this. Take care of itself? Uh, it does not. I own a cow. No, um, so several years ago, um, life was hectic, and I let my lawn get a little shaggy. Probably a bit of an understatement. I probably, I, like Florida, I probably didn't go for like a month. So it was like thick and luscious, which is also like another word for jungle. Uh, so I got a letter from the Homeowners Association, and I, with the stuff that was going on at work and at home, I was not going to get a chance to do anything about it anytime soon. So I suggested to Rhonda, I'm going to pay someone to come do this lawn, at least to get us caught up for a while. And like, after that came twice, I said, I'm never mowing the lawn again. <laughs> so I kept the lawnmower for a year. It was a symbolic symbol in the garage. Mm -hmm. Got rid of it. I, um, they do what they do in like 15 or 20 minutes, what it took me four hours to do. They do a much better job. Nice. I'm happy to pay them to do it. Yeah. Sometimes they forget, especially in the winter. They don't get paid when they forget. It's fine. It all just works out. <laughs> Concept of mowing your lawn in the winter is fascinating to me. Yeah, that doesn't I mean, happen. I was like, why? Yeah. Because um, Florida. Sort of depends. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. Well, I mean, I have lots of Christmases that I was wearing a short sleeve t-shirt and no pants because it was in the 80s. Yeah. I mean, we don't. We don't, I mean, we have like cold, they call them cold snaps here. And it's, you know. Cold snaps, they mean like, oh, it's mid 60s. <laughs> no, we'll get freezing for a minute. Three or four days. Yeah. A week. And then. Okay. So maybe I should come to Florida for the holidays. Yeah. It's nice here. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. California's always temperate. California has one temperature year round. Well, the Bay Area has one temperature year round. It's like 60s and 70s. Well, less 70s in the winter, but like basically 60s average flat year round. That's like, I like, I like a location that has flat, like temperature the whole year round. That sounds very appealing. <laughs> However, 60s is not. That's because you're in Florida. Person. If you lived in, if you lived in, in the Bay Area, then you, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, you'd, you'd go to Florida. And I do you remember being there in like May and thinking it's awful chilly. <laughs> yeah. Um, we, we, we pitched the tent on Tuesday night again. It was uh, like mid eighties when I put it up and got to like the mid seventies overnight. Only like a little, like just really heavy dew and no rain. It was, it was, it was warm. It wasn't too yeah. hot, but it was not pleasant warm. though. Yeah. Oh, I guess this is the part where I introduce the topic. I mean, it could be. We could continue <laughs> talking about uh, I was like, back this, is nice. <laughs> this is nice. Somebody's supposed to be doing something. We, we don't pitch the tent. Don't, don't overthink it. Because um, either it's too hot or it's too cold. Well, so isn't camping in the cold, like, nice? You get out there, you put your tent up, and then you get, like, in your sleeping bag, and your face is a little, I say cold, like, I don't know, like, 50s? <laughs> <laughs> Um, 
50s is normal. 50s is like legitimate camping weather uh, mm -hmm. at night. Um, that happens like in the spring and the fall. And like if you if you nail the perfect window. Um, ah. Cold camping in the cold is like, you know, below freezing. Like we have we have sleeping yeah, bags. That's cold. That's 100 percent cold. We have sleeping bags that are rated for freezing, I believe. I think mine goes, I think mine's rated for like 20. And, and, and like it's a, you know, a high-end sleeping bag in Florida. And the kids is rated for like 40. The kids, they're individual. They don't have one. They share. They each have <laughs> Like maybe for warmth, it makes sense. <laughs> yeah, they're not big, you know? I mean, save money. You just buy one bag and toss them both in there. <laughs> As long as it has two zippers and they can come from either end, and right? Like, <laughs> Siblings what? love that. Siblings love spending more time together in a bag. <laughs> yeah, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> we actually did that uh, with the kids for a, a period of time, but I think we stopped doing that when um, uh, we were uh, potty training and uh, bedtimes <laughs> were not 100% dry. Um, <laughs> that was about the time when we decided they, we should probably split them. We gotta separate this out. <laughs> <laughs> or one, or the one that's progressed is gonna be miserable. Yeah. That seems fair. That seems like a fair way to do it. Yeah. Well, so, the topic for this week, which mm -hmm. you may or may not know, now I'm just unsure of myself <laughs> after last week, um, is Tetragrammaton. <laughs> Tetragrammatron. Grammaton? Grammatron. Grammaton. Grammaton. Uh, Can you use it in a sentence, please? The topic is Tetragrammaton. This week's topic is Tetragrammaton. <laughs> that that truly that part truly never gets old to me. T E T I like that R A Grammatron. Yeah. Grammaton. Grammaton. Not Tron. G R A M or G R A H A M, like cracker. Uh, G R A M M. Oh, oh. double A O N. Yeah. Ah. So, grandma, literally, grandma. like your mother's mother. <laughs> Three grandmas <laughs> in a Tetra pack. <laughs> um, not to be confused with tetragammaton, which would be uh, three uh, doses of gamma rays. Um, Deadly. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually studying gamma rays right now in, in preparation to launch my diesel-powered rocket. Um, I would be shocked to read an article that features you doing some sort of back alley astronaut activity. <laughs> Being like, Florida man. Astronaut. You'll be Florida man, essentially. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Back alley astronaut has a weird ring to it. <laughs> not sure if I like Florida it or man not. builds rocket out of lawnmower parts. But I feel yeah, like I... back alley astronaut is sketchy in a legitimate way. Like the, the astronaut part like brings it back or tries to bring it back to he like legitimizes the back alley part. Yeah. yeah. They're like science. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's fine. It's science. It's yeah, science. but like there's just science happening back here. Yeah, but but like back alley doctor doesn't like religionize the doctor part, and that's also science. Well, does that say more about about our like uh, mental understanding of astronauts and doctors? We really just don't understand the science of astronauts. The and that's like I realized like all astronauts are pilots. You have to be a pilot before you have to be an astronaut. <laughs> I didn't realize that for the longest time. Then I was like, oh, of course. Like, yeah, because I mean, why wouldn't you want someone up in an area with no atmosphere that knows how to like vector vehicles around with wings that work in an atmosphere? I'm like, we're gonna take you from here, yeah. put you over here, and that makes sense. Sure. Here's I mean, an interesting one. In when this, when in my mind, go ahead. When you're so if you're the International Space Station, right? Think about this thing like orbiting Earth. And you go, oh, well, we're getting a little low. So maybe we should boost it up. The problem with boosting it up is now you've changed, like where you boost it up, like where it's closest and furthest from Earth. Um, like if you boost it up, you're actually pulling the other side out, right? Or pulling the, I'm sorry, pulling the other side in. So if you imagine like Earth is between my hands, so well now you've like, 
increase or decrease the height on the other end. So to increase height, you actually just go faster, like in the direction you're going away, like straight. Mm -hmm. And then that, but you have to do it at the right time. Otherwise you've increased the height on both ends. So if you're too shallow here and too high here, if you fire your rocket engines here, now you're high enough here, but you're way too high over here. Mm -hmm. So you have to fire like midway between to accommodate, or no, I guess you would do it after your height, you would do it here. And that would also, yeah. Like, doesn't that, like, it's, it's hard to, here's the thing. So if you were, if you were. I'm sure they have actual terminology for it instead of just using their hands and be like, my, picture my hand being the earth. <laughs> <laughs> they probably do. I can't imagine like an abstract. I was back like, ah, it looks like altitude's a little old, low. Should we? The earth is here, but we're. On the flamey end, the, the flamey pointy things. And... <laughs> yeah, maybe I'm not qualified to be a back alley yeah. I would just work on, maybe work on the pilot license part first and then work your way up. I was get, what I, I was gonna say is is when when you don't know a thing, yeah, and, and you think that the thing is too complicated, the way that you describe that feeling is that I'm not a rocket scientist, <laughs> yeah. so it would imply that being a back alley astronaut requires a very high level of in, of of skill and expertise. Because well, I'm glad that I put that back literal theory to rest. rocket scientists. <laughs> <laughs> the whole point of astronauts but you also have about brain surgeons right brain surgeons all, like it's, it's not brain yes, surgeon. back alley brain surgeon doesn't sound good either <laughs> I, brain surgery yeah what does i mean back alley astronaut but like would you go to like <laughs> i can think about getting lasik done would i go for back alley lasik no i i don't know what's the price i mean the answer is like maybe it's a it's a possibility weighing the pros and cons <laughs> I, look, everybody starts somewhere, you know? But there's a, some guy that's done dozens of these versus some guy that's done thousands of these, you know? Well, that's like, so in talking about terminology. I apologize for gendering the back alley uh, LASIK. Back alley LASIK guy? Yeah. <laughs> like, check this guy out. <laughs> <laughs> so when you say like, oh, it's not brain surgery or it's not rocket science, but it's like also mm. when people are like, well, it's not my first rodeo. <laughs> and it's just like, well, how many rodeos do you... <laughs> Do I do like who are truly qualified at rodeos. Yeah, yeah. Well, apparently one is the answer. Right? One. Yeah. one is sufficient. This but is when have rodeo. you done something twice and you're like, I'm an expert? <laughs> Run a D and D game. Well, rodeos are the only thing that come to mind. Actually, that I felt like an expert the second time through. This is my second rodeo. I'll have you know. I I got this, y'all. Second this is one. Fine. The kids have a a bike rodeo this weekend. A bike yes. rodeo. Describe bike rodeo. I don't know, but I'm super excited to find out, right? I'll report back next week, but but it's a, it's, I don't know. It sounds super. I definitely have like, an image of one kid lassoing another kid on a bike. <laughs> I mean, I, I hope so. I really hope so. Wow. Yeah. I hope there's like an obstacle course involved or like. Clowns inside barrels. Yeah, if there's yeah, not the thing you know about rodeos is there's clowns involved somewhere. Yeah, distract. Do you remember um, the movie Borat when he did the national anthem at a rodeo? I know of the movie Borat, but I never watched the movie Borat. Same. I only know it from yeah. people quoting it. <laughs> it. It's it's worth watching, I think now, because. It doesn't seem nearly as extreme now as it did when it came out. On, Interesting. Yeah, in any direction. Like now you're like, oh, we just say Tuesday. <laughs> like it's. It doesn't push the boundaries like it did when it came out. No, because the boundaries now have moved <laughs> astronomical distances. We fired the little flamey things, right? And we pulled the boundaries. Do you remember when idiocracy was so in incredibly yeah. far fetched? Yeah, I I we watched Idiocracy not that long ago because I I have this like this like golden age like rose tinted glasses like in my memory of 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 the movie being like really funny and whatever and it, it is still funny, but it's also just really depressing. It, um, Same thing with Wally. Like you you watch uh, Wally and the and the people on the on the spaceship and, the, and their little moving chairs and it's like, <sighs> no, we can't do it. 
There are how many how many space movies are there? Wally, well, obviously, a space movie. How many space movies are there where there are generations of humans on board and they just don't even know, like, like they the whole like they expect their generation to live and die during the transit of this space vessel, and they have no concept of like anything other than the the thing they're on. There's there's several movies like that that I think of, and there are movies or TV series, and and. And that is like the the sole reason I'm glad that I wasn't born in the future. Imagine being born on that like you're Wait, like a you blowjacker. You're, you're glad old. that you weren't born in the future. <laughs> That's one of the sole reasons. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, sorry. Just, just, took me a minute to like click in. Yeah, yeah. was that not what you expected me to kill? Like sure any what? time that isn't now. Um. Wait, say that again. Is the future any time that isn't now? Uh. <laughs> no, I think there's a time where it, it maybe tomorrow is not the future. The future, like the, the future with a capital F, capital okay. F, yes, is like always. Oh, I understand the question. I'm sorry, I did mean the future as like a idyllic concept that I of the time that I would like, want to live in. Okay. Cap, capital F future, oh, yeah. Future. Jet, yeah, Jetsons, Jetsons, yeah, in the year three thousand. Uh -huh. Well, I mean. The year two thousand was was unfathomably distant in what like nineteen sixty whenever uh, <laughs> <laughs> when when uh, when uh, Arthur C. Clarke wrote uh, wrote two thousand yeah that was that was the future that was capital F future right there. Prince wrote party nineteen ninety nine. What is the topic today? Tetragrammaton. Tetragrammaton. See now, now, I, now I got the gamma rays in my brain uh, from tetragrammaton. Tetragrammaton. Ton. Um, gramma is relating to words. Yes, it is. Tetra is three things. So it is. Tetra is not three, is it? It's a giant, three-headed. Five. Five. Sure, five. Yeah. Uh, five no, five was penta. Uh, tetra, like a, pen, like a pentagon. Yeah. Um, so it's a giant. Three, really? It's a giant three. I love that you guys are arguing about the numbers. It's a giant. I'm trying to, but Chris isn't going to argue about it. It's a giant three-headed robot that uh, spouts words and corrects everyone's grammar. Um, the tetragrammaton <laughs> invades you the and it's you're using improper conjunctions. So. <laughs> Grammar robots. That's what the world needs. <laughs> Invasion of the tetragrammatons. I, um, next novel. I don't think I like that's that. it. Also my first novel. <laughs> <laughs> that way you get the bad one out of the way and then you can say, this isn't my first novel. I like this referencing the novel, like the first novel, and someone being like, oh, so how many have you written? And you're like, oh, just the one. <laughs> <laughs> Is, isn't it just the fish, the tetra? That's a very popular fish to keep in aquariums. I don't isn't know. That, isn't that, that a was a beta. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's sure, Gary, yes. Tetra is a fish that is popular in aquariums. Tetra are fish. It's also a brand of fish food. Because why wouldn't you give fish food a fish for food? No, it's not. It's not actually fish as food. It's the name of a fish. My fish. The name of a fish, and you're giving it to fish. Who's to say it's not actually fish itself? Did you watch Finding Dory? Yes. Is it good? No, no, I did not find. I did not watch Finding Dory. It's no Finding Nemo. Ah, that's too bad. Yeah. I um to completely change topics, I watched a movie called Night Shift the other night, nice. starring Henry Winkler and uh Michael Keaton. <laughs> and if you were like, I never knew they were in a movie together, you'd be you you this movie is bizarre. It's basically like them in a coroner's office and um they start running an escort service out of it because they run the night shift and nothing else is going on. And um, who is it? Is it Shelley Long? Is that a person? That's a person. That's a person. And then Beverly Long. Hills Cop. Beverly Hills Troop. 
Beverly True Pills. Um, anyway, and they uh, help her and run her services out of the coroner's office. It's very bizarre. This is like a this is like a mid eighties uh, movie where Michael Keaton was in his like. Um, oh, he's in his prime. That, that phase that we currently think that uh, Nick Cage is in, where he's just kind of crazy all the time. Yeah, That's like the he, Michael- yeah, it's very yeah, and they all look the same. It's actually really bizarre that way. None of these people have aged, <laughs> but I think it was made in like eighty two. That there we go. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, oh, that wasn't that long ago. Original music composed by Burt Bacharach. Ooh. <laughs> really? Yeah. Wow. Wow. This might be going on my uh, list of items to watch. It was an interesting watch. Um, yeah. How did you? How did you? How did you stumble across it? Like what? Um, you, uh, my is, partner is <laughs> recommending this to you. Yeah. Actually, not only that, someone. Someone, my partner and I know, owns this movie on DVD and lent it to us. Oh, nice, yeah. And I was very like, why does she own this on DVD? Like, because <laughs> I feel like, I don't know, I, I feel like all the movies I own are really, like, rewatchable. <laughs> and I was just like, I don't know if this goes in that category. <laughs> this, is, I like my, this is one of my favorite bad movies that I own. Future. Oh, yeah, it was a made-for-TV movie. It stars Dean Cain and Wesley Snipes and uh, Vanessa Williams. It is about, uh, it's called Future Sport. And in the future, they play Future Sport. That is the name of the sport that they play. It's called Future Sport. And Future with a capital F. <laughs> <laughs> and they play, Future Sport evolved out of gang violence. So instead of doing territorial battles with guns, they started in the streets playing this game called Future Sport in the, in the alleys and streets to, to uh, settle uh, differences. In some alleys and streets. Some yes. alleys and streets. Have the LASIK. Insurgents and LASIK. LASIK. And, LASIK, uh, and, uh, and uh, the, um, in, in, the future, in the future of, of Future Sport, um, you have a popularity index. Um, where you are rated on a global scale of your like popular, it's sort of like your stock price. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so like Dean Kane's character has a very high popularity index, which he refers to sometimes as his PI index, which would then be his popularity index index. Oh yeah. This, uh, uh, and, and the, and the, the plot um, synopsis the plot synopsis is there are international terrorists uh that are threatening violence on like the republic of the states or something yeah all this all what the country uh 90 something, something or other yeah. um, so the terrorists like during super terrorists or hawaiians okay <laughs> <laughs> Wow. <laughs> There's international terrorists and they're threatening violence. And so. Now, uh, wait, are they international? Hawaii has seceded from the Union? Yes. It? Yeah, it's, it's part of like the Pacific, uh, the Pacific conglomerate. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> oh, this is a TV gem. Yeah. And um, how do they pack all this into 90 minutes? With <laughs> I mean, it's, it's pretty good. It's, it's definitely, it's definitely packed in. But like you had to track that down on you, probably, right? Yeah, I, I found, I think, no, no. Uh, this was, at, the way that I acquired this the first time, because this is my second copy of this, the way that I acquired this the you first time. You the tape on the first one. <laughs> yeah, I had a VHS. And I had the VHS because my dad worked at the warehouse and would get free stuff. And so he's like, hey, here's a movie that you can have. And I'm like, okay, great. And so I watched it with my friends and we thought it was the most amazing thing ever. So much so that it became like a popular hit that we watched over and over again. And then, and then when we didn't have the, the VHS anymore, um, I, I made it a point to get the movie on DVD because I needed future sport. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you... Um... So that's like your DVD. Like that's like the one that your family doesn't understand why you own it. Uh, Erin understands why I own it. She she gets it. Yeah. Okay. We watch. We've watched it together. A right, couple let me, of let me make a note of this. Actually, <laughs> you're like add night shift and future. 
<laughs> I I, would... That's exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's not nearly as bad as some like particularly like I mean I, there's some there's some bad um, like cult movies that I have owned over the years um, that had that are just bad. And then there's some bad cult movies that are funny, but probably not rewatchable that many times. Future Sport is good every time. Because it's <laughs> I, ridiculous. My go-to, like, wear it out movie is War Games. Yeah, okay. It's a pretty standard boring, but really, like, when the nerdy guy's walking around going, the Whopper has already fought, fought World War Three, 10,000, whatever. Like, it's that scene is just... Gets me every time. I love it. I love it. I'm like, you, I'm going to work on computers. And you own it. Oh, yes. I don't own a DVD player any longer, but I own the DVD for War Games. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I've never, I've never owned War Games, sadly. Mm. I, uh, I found it at Walmart in the early days of DVDs. Mm. I'm like, oh, I have to buy this. And they were stupid, stupid expensive, like when they first came out. And yeah, DVD now if you go to Walmart in the DVD section, you find War Games, it's going to be in the $2 bin. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah you should have yeah. waited 20 years, Gary. <laughs> well, I would have missed about 130 watchings of it in that time. <laughs> Holy cow, we're already 10 minutes. So, uh, Tetragamma, Tetragramma, Tetragramma, is Tetragramma, hard Tetragramma. Tons, but what is it? You didn't, you didn't even say what you thought it was. I said giant robots that correct people's grammar. I said it was a fish. You said it was a fish. Tetragrammaton's a fish. Okay, great. Right. Right. Now we can continue to the actual meaning of tetragrammatron. I, I just, I just, if it was a fish, I just would be so over the moon. <laughs> um, so te the, the tetragrammaton is oh, um, not tetragrammatron. There's only one. Yeah, it's well. I mean, I guess once you hear what it is, it might make. It, depending on your belief system. Um, it's the four letters in Hebrew or in Latin for the biblical name of the God of Israel. So Y-H-W-H. That's on a lot of things. Yahweh, unpronounceable word, or the name that you're not supposed to say. Yeah, you which just is said it. it. <laughs> well, I, I, I don't think it applies to me. I mean, I didn't know you like it. Someone's not supposed to say it. <laughs> Um, so yeah, the four letter scriptural name, basically, of... I feel like that's probably something I should have known. Probably. Um, yeah. Maybe, but I feel like also, I don't know. There's all, it's also, um, I guess, when I ask someone else if they, because I often pull the, uh, pull the yeah. crowds to know if... Crowdsource your... Yeah, if this topic. is a common knowledge thing that people know or not. Yeah. Um, apparently, it's also a song for Mars Volta which I am not familiar with. Uh, I don't know Mars Volta songs by titles. Yeah. I just like, know them by, oh, it's the one that does the dee 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 That seems about right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's but I, I, don't, I do not doubt that they have a song that is named after the four unpronounceable letters in, in the Hebrew scripture, yeah. Um, we actually have questions. We have listener questions. I'm not entirely sure if they're legitimate listener questions or if there are people that are just trying to troll us. Are, um, are you suggesting that be legitimate listeners? I, I, mean, I, think, I think they're legitimate if my past week is proving, hopefully. Okay. Uh, I'm sure they're bizarre. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> I mean, either way, I'm down with them. <laughs> um, the first one was D-F-F-F-D-D-F. So I'm not going to ask that question. <laughs> No, I don't know about that one. <laughs> um, but uh, let's see. If we're going, they're they're only they're spaced a minute apart. So I guess I'll go with the one that is a minute older, um, uh, which is uh, Gary would like to know what is it about Shark Week. <laughs> I would like to know that actually. Well, I would like to, I, I would like to reference the classic song about Shark Week by the Handjob Academy. Uh, which is a all-girl rap group, uh, some of whom are lesbians and some of whom are not, one of whom is a, is a elementary school or maybe preschool teacher. Um, anyway, uh, Shark Week is all about menstruation. Um, so that is, that is it. That is what it is. That is what it is about Shark Week. It's menstruation, just for the guys out there, because obviously they don't know. <laughs> okay. That's what it is. I uh, 
I thought Discovery Channel. If Handjob Academy has taught me anything, that's what, that's what they've well, taught me. That was the one takeaway. We have they not taught thing. something to <laughs> Also, I, I love the description of um, some of which are lesbians, some of which are not. I feel like I would like to describe any group of people like that. <laughs> That's a fair point. Yeah. Yeah. Like you're given like a, 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 a number of people in this room, some of whom are lesbians. Yeah. We're just like, you're just like the U.S. women's soccer team, some of which are lesbians, some of which are not. Like it just works in every situation. <laughs> It might not work if you're talking about the men's soccer team, but, you know. It might. You could still make the argument, I suppose. <laughs> we live in such a modern world. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, don't don't assume, Chris. <laughs> That's true. I shouldn't. I shouldn't. No. I, uh, I, does it work for a restaurant, though? What, the lesbian thing? Yeah, let's head to my favorite sushi <laughs> restaurant. Or are we going with Shark Week again? <laughs> I was thinking the lesbian thing, but okay. <laughs> Um, I don't, I, yeah, why did, I guess, uh, Discovery Channel's uh, sensationalization um, is part of the reason that we are politically where we are today. I blame them. For, for the fascination with sharks? No. A decade ago when they brought out Shark Week, it was a big like, ooh, we're really edgy. And now it's like. And now we have Sharknado and we're jaded. Mm. I love that song too. That's a song? No, it but it sounds like a song. Oh. Now we have Sharknado and we're jaded. I would listen to that. Why don't they? Next question comes from Chad. <laughs> and, he, and he would like to know, yes. how much protein should you have in a day? I think we all probably have different answers for that. <laughs> uh, my answer to this question is a sufficient amount. Enough. Yeah. Enough is the right answer. Um, I am really big on eating what my body like uh, is hankering for. So if I, like if I'm hankering for vegetables, like a specific, a specific vegetable, there's a reason my body's telling me there's something in there that I need. I have a deficiency in whatever that is. So like, if it's something like reasonable, if it's junk food, that's a different story. But if I'm like, wow, I really, really want some carrots, like, you know. But do you get like, that hankering like? Often? I was well, going to say, you get that hankering just like, Full stop. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Like every day. As a non yeah. as a non meat eater, I I'm not like you know what I could go for is beans and rice. Like I'm not like I I don't know. I get that. I mean, there are meals that are just not. In I love beans and rice, lighter. but I'm not like. I don't know. No, but I mean, there's there's definitely times where I go, oh, I really need some beans. Like I, like I can feel after the result of eating, like what it does to my body chemistry, and yeah, so definitely. There are times when I desire protein in the form of meat. Interesting. I am not at all that self-aware of what my body needs. Like I barely recognize. Oh no, don't confuse that with being self-aware. <laughs> I, I barely register that it needs food. Yeah, it, there's a special place where you're not very, like you can't be like over hungry because, and everything sounds good because your body's just like, anything. Just, <laughs> give me anything. Yeah. Anything to go on, please. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, but if you're if you're eating regular meals, then like breakfast, I never have a hankering for anything. It's just like put something in my belly. But lunch is there. I'm like, no, I could use, I could go for like a sandwich, like a peanut butter sandwich. There's a lot going on there. Breakfast is hard. I don't do breakfast well. I stopped doing I, breakfast. Really? Yeah. Do you find that it just works out? Yeah, because by lunchtime I'm like, okay, I need to eat something. Okay. So, I, I, and I, I used to, I used to skip breakfast like all the time, or eat like really small breakfast. So, like, um, not having breakfast is like barely, like barely registers on my. What about um, um, do you have a bad habit of of skipping lunch for work, or did you have a bad? Well, habit? I have a bad habit of like postponing lunch, but not having breakfast helps with that because like if yeah. I push lunch back to like two or three, I'm like. Oh! dying yeah i have scheduled lunches on my calendar now that's smart every day and i i for the longest time i thought it was like a silly thing like why would anybody schedule lunch like of course you're gonna stop eating lunch but the reality is like i wasn't stopping eating lunch so having it scheduled has been um great i'll just put an hour an hour in the calendar and if i'm really rocking and rolling maybe i'll work 15 minutes into lunch and then take a 15 minute later lunch 
if I'm like not feeling it, I'll stop 10 minutes early. It's like, you know, whatever. But that block of time is there. And I'm like, oh, I have, I have lunch today. Mm-hmm. I have a scheduled lunch I got to do today. Well, and it like kind of, you still are getting stuff done, but it like knocks you off and you manage to like actually get more nutrients to like brain fuel. <laughs> oh yeah, my afternoons are so much more productive unless there's meetings. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I mean, there's nothing wrong with meetings. Meetings are fine. Slack notifications. <laughs> Thomas. <sighs> is there one more question? Uh, the last question is an Allison question. I figure we should probably uh, hold that until next week in the chance, the fairly decent chance that we don't get any more listener questions. You don't want to answer the DFFFF, DFFFF question? Uh, I could. Uh, my response to that is... Do you, do you, so are, do, is, do you, does your timer right now, spit it out. Does your timer right now show under a minute left or is it actually giving like a second count? It says less than a minute. Because I get a countdown. It tells me we're at 20 seconds left. Ooh. Oh, yeah. you're, you're the chosen one. Mine just says less than a minute. Well, I'm running it on, on Linux. So uh-huh, this is like a change. I think it's a different, uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Which man. it's kind of lame. Like I know when it's all going to explode. That is, that sure is lame. lame. That is. Yeah. I might have- Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at, at binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.